We have a swinging door here, and we want to find the forces on the hinges when the door is resting half open. Luckily, we have a little bit more information than that in our problem statement. Let's go ahead and get going to try and find what's going on here. I'm going to take this part out here and say that the door's weight is evenly distributed between the hinges. That means that if I call this hinge A and this hinge B, the Y components of those forces are going to be equal because we're distributing that weight equally between them. Now, let's get going with trying to solve for these forces. We'll start by drawing a free body diagram of the thing in question, the door. And then the forces of the hinges will act on this diagram and they will hopefully help us figure out what's going on. Here's my door. It's a lovely door. Maybe not proportional to what it is over there, but it's all right. We have a center of mass here. What else do we need about this door? There's really not a lot geometrically going on. We've got two meters between the hinges. And then at the hinges, A and B, we have some unknown reaction forces. That means that, all right, we'll put the weight in, 400 newtons. That means that we have a known, we know that there's a force there, but we don't know the X or the Y components to it. We don't know the magnitude or direction. And I'm gonna propose that a lot of times it's gonna be easy or easier for us if we say that that's an unknown Y component and an unknown X component. Since I don't know the direction, I could try and guess the direction or reason out what direction I think it would be. And that's a useful thing to do here. I don't feel like thinking that much, so I'm just putting my unknowns in the positive x and positive y directions so that if I get a positive, I know that, so here's my x and y. If I get a positive value, then it's going in the positive x direction. If I get a negative, then it's going in the negative. Any other geometry we need? It looks like probably we want, if the door is one meter wide, then it'll be half a meter to get to the center of mass. And I think that's all the geometry we need. Let's go ahead and apply static equilibrium and see how far we can get. We'll sum the forces and try and solve for these. And We'll point out, if we're finding the forces on the hinges, that means solving for AY, AX, BY, and BX. Find AY, AX, BY, and BX. Normally, with two-dimensional static equilibrium, you only get three equations. That's why we needed this evenly distributed nonsense to be able to solve for these four things. All right. Sums our forces in the Y. We'll sum to zero, call up positive. And this says that AY plus BY minus the weight of 400 newtons equals zero. We can combine AY and BY because we know they're equal and say that two AY is equal to 400 newtons or dividing by two AY is equal to BY is equal to 200 newtons. We maybe could have even done that without a free body diagram. The torques would have been a lot harder though. All right, let's move on. Let's do the sums of our forces in the X. Call the right positive. And now we have AX plus BX equals zero. This just says that AX is equal to negative BX. But we don't know either of them yet, so that doesn't really help us. Finally, we can go to our sums of our torques and we can pick whichever point we'd like to to sum our torques about. If you think about it, picking the center of mass is kind of the worst because then BY and BX and AX and AY all appear. Probably the best would be either A or B. Let's go ahead and pick B. You could have picked A, it would have been just fine. And we'll sum our torques. 
BY doesn't appear and BX doesn't appear because they're acting directly on that point. So there's no lever arm. They don't appear in the torque equation. AY, it turns out, doesn't have a lever arm either. Only AX appears and the weight appears. AX is trying to spin clockwise, which is a negative torque. So we have negative times two meters times our unknown AX. Then we have the weight that's acting on its perpendicular lever arm of 0.5 meters that's trying to spin clockwise as well. So it's also a negative times 0.5 meters times the weight, which we know is 400 newtons, and that sums to zero. We can now solve this one equation, one unknown, for that unknown AX by moving the AX to the other side and then dividing by two. This gives us AX equals negative 100 because 400 times 0.5 is 200, divided by two is 100, negative 100 newtons. In other words, AX is equal to 100 newtons to the left. Let's go ahead and come back in here and substitute this in here and say that, okay, BX is equal to negative AX, or BX is equal to a negative negative 100, which gives us a positive 100 newtons. Lovely, which is to the right. So if I want to find the forces on the hinges, I've got all the components. And what I can do is I can say that my combined forces, my force in hinge A, maybe I'll give myself a little bit more space here. Force in hinge A is equal to negative 100 in the I hat plus 200 in the J hat with units of Newtons. And then my force in the B, my force at hinge B is going to be 100 in the I hat plus 200 in the J hat, again with units of Newtons. And there we go. We have our forces in those hinges.